your life work. The miracle of high-speed wire communication is commonplace today. Lift a telephone receiver and the world is at your fingertips. Speak and your voice spans oceans and continents with the speed of light. Just a moment. I have London for you, sir. I'll have to call you Can you take it now? I'll connect you. It will be several minutes. Calling Bermuda. Buenos Aires. Fire, sir. Rio de Janeiro. Shall I connect you? Just a moment. Chicago calling London. Right on a telegram board. Calling Bermuda. Fire, sir. Rio de Janeiro. Shall I connect you? Just a moment. Chicago calling London. Right on a telegraph blank, and your words appear by modern magic on paper thousands of miles away. Yes, it is hard to realize that a century has passed since Samuel Morse invented the telegraph in 1844. Early equipment was crude and handmade, but telegraphy made rapid progress as the years went by and went forward with America's expanding frontiers. Today, Western Union operates a vast network of two million miles of wire, furnishing swift, reliable communication. Financial quotations are transmitted from exchanges in key cities to ticker tape receivers in brokers' offices throughout the United States, Cuba, and in Canada. Each year, many millions of money orders, ranging from small sums to thousands of dollars, go over the telegraph wires. Even the nation's time depends upon wire signals from the official Naval Observatory. Day and night, in editorial offices everywhere, teletype machines bring in the news of the world for millions of readers. And every year, more than 200 million telegrams pass through the hands of operators in the traffic department. Here, in this operating room, hundreds of girls receive and transmit messages on batteries of teleprinters and multiplex machines. Those with ability and experience may be promoted to become supervisors on the floor or instructors in the schools which Western Union maintains in many cities. Here, the trainees learn by practicing on actual equipment. Generally, a high school education is desirable. The teleprinter keyboard is similar to a typewriter. As the keys are punched, the distant receiver records each letter on a moving paper tape. An operator removes the tape and gums it to the familiar yellow blanks. The letters NL on this tape identify the message as a night letter. The operator must know how to handle the various classifications, such as day letter, night letter, deferred cable, and special listings. To develop a trainee into a competent operator of the teleprinter and multiplex machines requires from two to three months. Job opportunities for men are found in the maintenance of all transmission equipment and in the operation of the relay offices. In the carrier system department, Trained technicians maintain equipment that transmits hundreds of messages over a single pair of wires. In the experimental laboratories, college-trained research engineers work constantly to find new methods and techniques to provide quicker service. One of these developments is radio beam telegraphy, transmitting 1,040 messages in each direction simultaneously through a series of high towers. Another is the facsimile telegram, whereby a written message is dropped into a transmitter and automatically reproduced by a receiver. Men also were needed at the switchboards which controlled circuits between offices and in supervision of departments as well as general executive positions. Typical of these is the traffic manager who is responsible for the efficient dispatch of all messages through the traffic department. Construction of new branch offices and maintenance of existing buildings and properties is the function of the plant department. New equipment is installed and wired by equipment men and installation experts from this department. Teleprinters and multiplex machines are in constant use and require inspection by trained testing and regulating men so that sudden breakdowns may be avoided. In the commercial department are handled most transactions with the public. In addition, this department employs about 15,000 messengers to pick up and deliver messages. Here, excellent opportunities are provided for young men to acquire business training 
because of the contacts established while delivering messages. More than a million prominent businessmen began their careers as Western Union messengers. The scope of the modern telegraph and cable is worldwide. In America alone, 30,000 branch offices and agencies offer many opportunities for managers, operators, repairmen, and other trained personnel to render efficient service to the public. It's a far cry from present-day telegraph facilities, the early beginnings of the 19th century. Similarly, it's a far cry from the first telephone developed by Alexander Bell in 1875. In the early days, switchboards were operated by men and service was crude. Today, modern facilities handle more than 100 million calls every 24 hours. These calls flow at the rate of 1,000 per second through a telephone network using enough wire to string a line to the sun more than 90 million miles away. This tremendous system provides job opportunities for half a million employees with a wide range of interests and capacities from outdoor work with field crews to intricate research work in the experimental laboratory. To study these job opportunities, Let's imagine that the town of Homeville is to receive a new and larger telephone exchange. First, the engineering department prepares the plans for the buildings and transmission systems and arranges for plant construction. Much of this technical work requires specialized training. Then, skilled craftsmen build lines, install equipment, and maintain it in operating order. After construction is completed, a large number of operators are brought in to staff the switchboard under the guidance of supervisors. These operators have been trained to provide courteous and speedy service. To be an operator, an applicant must have a clear voice, normal hearing and eyesight. A high school education is an advantage. About 225,000 operators, the most important factor in efficient exchange service, are employed by all companies. They also handle all long distance and special calls. Even in communities served by dial telephone and automatic systems, many operators are required for information and special service. With the traffic personnel on hand, the new home bill exchange is ready for full scale operation. A clerical force is organized for computing charges for service, preparing and mailing bills and collecting the money, as well as all other office work. Costs and income are analyzed and statistics prepared for administrative purposes. Now the new Homeville Exchange is a unit of the worldwide telephone network. To supply this far-flung network with the latest improvements, research engineers in laboratories constantly experiment to discover new techniques, new materials, and quicker methods of production. The dial telephone and automatic switchboard are among the better known accomplishments of these skilled engineers. These are men who must possess the creative mind and an everlastingly curious approach. In addition, they are highly trained in scientific and technical fields. While a college education is helpful, a young man or woman can start in the telephone or telegraph industries after graduation from high school and work his or her way up. For technical work, an understanding of mechanical drawing, elementary electricity, physics, and mathematics is very important. All new employees in these industries are trained right on the job or in company schools to perform specific tasks. One of these special jobs is that of the lineman. His duty is to help build new lines and repair those which have been damaged. In the spring and summer, he fights storms of rain and wind. In the winter, there is ice, snow, and freezing gales. Opportunities in all jobs for promotion are plentiful because most companies prefer to advance their own personnel whenever possible. Dependability is an important factor in judging an applicant's aptitude. And just as the public depends on prompt service and communication, the telegraph and telephone companies in turn must depend upon reliable, capable employees to keep these nerve systems of our social and economic life functioning properly. Throughout the country, 
men and women can find excellent job opportunities in the twin fields of wire communication. These are jobs with stable employment for a wide range of aptitudes and ambitions. If you are the sort of person who finds satisfaction in contributing to the service of other people everywhere, then telephone or telegraph communication may become your life work.